Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with buttermilk pie. That's right, unless you're from certain areas of the South, you may never had this before or even heard of it, which really is a shame. Imagine if only people in the Southwest knew about tacos or only people around New York knew about pizza or only people in Pennsylvania enjoyed Scrapple. Okay, that last one might not have been a great example. But what I'm trying to say is this pie should be way more popular than it is. And that's because not only is it easy to make, it is incredibly delicious. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by prepping our crust. And for that, you're going to need some prepared pie dough. I'm using my butter crust recipe, exactly one half of that. And of course, I'll provide links in the blog post. And what we'll do is go ahead and roll that out. And then we'll transfer that into our pie dish by rolling it up on our rolling pin, which allows us, as you'll see, to place it in perfectly centered. Or not. So I kind of missed. But that's okay, we'll just reposition and make sure that's nicely tucked into our pan or dish. And then once that's set, we'll take a knife and trim off any excess dough all the way around at the outside edge of the dish. And by the way, I enjoy using these sort of deep ceramic pie dishes, but I'm pretty sure you could adapt this to any pie pan you like to use. So we'll go ahead and trim off that extra dough around the outside. And then we're gonna go around folding in about a half inch of the dough to the inside edge which should, if everything goes according to plan, give us a double thickness of dough all the way around the outside. Around the outside, around the outside. And the whole reason we want to double up that dough around the outside edge is because the next thing we're going to do is do a decorative crimp. And contrary to that popular expression that crimping ain't easy, I'm going to show you just how simple this is. Okay, to crimp the dough, we just take two fingers on the inside and then press in between them with one finger from the outside. And by doing that all around the edge every inch or so, you're going to have a pretty fairly professional looking design. And one thing to keep in mind, once these pies are filled and baked, they always look really good. So please crimp with confidence. And then even though the traditional buttermilk pie is usually cooked using a raw crust, I'm going to go ahead and do what's called a blind bake. And the first step of that would be to dock this with a fork, which simply means prick the dough here and there, maybe 10 or 12 times in the bottom, and then a few times around the sides. At which point I'm going to place in a piece of parchment paper, and then pour in my baking weights, which are nothing more than ceramic balls. And what these do is sort of weight down the crust so it doesn't bubble up while we do this little pre-bake. So we will dump those in and even them out, and then sort of push those up the sides as well as we can. We really only need a single layer on the bottom. Oh, and by the way, you can do this exact same step using dried beans, or you can actually just skip it all together. And if your crust bubbles up a little bit, you can push it down as it cools. And then what we're going to do once that's set is go ahead and pop that into the center of a 350 degree oven for 15 minutes. And basically that's going to give this crust a little bit of a head start so that when our final pie is cooked, we don't have an undercooked, gummy, raw, starchy tasting crust at the bottom. And then what we need to do as soon as that comes out is very carefully, using the parchment paper, lift out those baking weights and transfer them into a bowl. And please be extremely careful not to lose your grip. Otherwise those will roll everywhere and you will never ever use baking weights again. So you've been warned. And then all we need to do before we use this is let it cool completely. And you'll see as this cools, it's gonna shrink in a little bit from the sides, as well as all your crimping will look better and more even. Yes, it's almost as if I did two of these and then used the better looking one for the rest of the video. Speaking of which, once our crust is blind baked, we can move on to the very easy filling. And the first step for this would be to add some sugar to some room temperature butter. And then using a spatula, we'll sort of smear that together until it's all combined. And for maybe the first time ever, I remember to leave my butter out. So it was actually nice and soft and easy to work with. So this time, at least, you're going to be spared watching the usual wrestling match. Although, to be perfectly honest, I sort of miss the struggle. It's become somewhat of a meditation. And then what we'll do once that's all been smeared together is add our flour and a little bit of salt. And then basically do the exact same thing. And could we have added our flour and salt to the first step? Probably, but I'm not sure because this is how I've always done it. Which reminds me, yes, of course you can do this using an electric mixer, but I don't for two reasons. One, I don't want to clean it. And two, doing this by hand, I'm going to burn off exactly the same amount of calories as I take in eating a slice of this. So I got that going for me, which is nice. So we will go ahead and smear that together as shown until the flour disappears. At which point we're going to dump in three large eggs. And we'll go ahead and mix those in with a spatula, but not entirely. As soon as it gets annoying to work with, we're going to switch to a whisk. 
and continue mixing with the whisk until this is relatively smooth. And if you wanted to start with the whisk, you could. But I find if you start with the whisk, it all sort of clumps together and gets trapped in the middle of the whisk, which is a situation I never enjoy. So what I like to do is get it started with the spatula until it gets to about this point, and then switch to the whisk. And then like I said, continue on until we have a fairly smooth mixture. And don't worry about any small lumps you might see here or there. We have a few more things to mix in here, so eventually it's going to all be very smooth. So that is looking pretty good right there, and we can proceed to add the rest of the ingredients, which will include a nice splash of real pure vanilla extract, as well as a very generous dose of freshly grated nutmeg. And sure, you can use pre-ground if you want, but I do not recommend it. Freshly grated is significantly better. And if you don't believe me, compare one to the other when you have too much free time in your hands and smell and taste the difference. You will be pretty shocked. And then speaking of freshly grated, we will also add the zest of one lemon, which never doesn't smell amazing. Right, the aromatherapy aspect of cooking is very underrated. And then besides the zest, we will also add the juice of one lemon, which brings us to the star of the show, one cup of buttermilk. Oh yes, the milk of butter. So tangy, so delicious. And what makes this pie so special. And then we'll take our whisk and go ahead and mix this until completely smooth. And I should mention, if you're in a place where you can't get buttermilk, there are a couple ways you can fake it, which I'll talk about on the blog. And that's it. Once this is all nicely mixed together, we'll go ahead and pour it in our now cool crust. And ideally, this much batter will come up just below our decorative edge. Because this will rise a little bit. Not too much, but maybe about a half inch. And then what we'll do once our filling's been transferred in is slowly rotate our dish like this for no apparent reason. At which point we will transfer that into the center of a 350 degree oven for about 45 to 55 minutes or until it's beautifully golden brown and just set. And let me show you what I mean by that. Okay, if we give this the old shake a shake -a, what we want is a very subtle wiggle, but not a soupy jiggle. Okay, so you see that? Everything sort of wiggles together. If just the center's jiggling and it looks a little loose, just pop it back in for a few minutes. But this was perfect. And then we're definitely going to need to let this cool down. And as it does, it'll sort of deflate a little bit and flatten out. And while some folks do like to serve this warm, I think it is way, way better ice cold. So I always refrigerate mine before slicing and serving. But of course, that's going to be up to you. You are, after all, the third eye of your pie. But anyway, I served up a nice cold slice. Garnished with three strategically placed raspberries. And I finished that off with a little dusting of powdered sugar. And that's it. My buttermilk pie is ready to enjoy. So let me grab a fork and dig in. And by the way, have you heard about those people in Asia that get paid millions to eat on camera? I think I could do that because I'm so graceful and elegant. So let me go in from the top and then sort of stab it like this. And then maybe change to a sort of a sideways scooping motion. Let me get this back over there. There we go. Nailed it. So yes, of course I'm kidding. That was terrible. But forget all that. That bite was extraordinarily delicious. Imagine a custard pie meets a lemon meringue pie meets a cheesecake. That is pretty much what we have here. So let me cleanse my palate with a raspberry and go in for another taste. Oh, and by the way, even though it's going to stay pretty pale, because we did give our crust a head start, it does not taste raw or feel all soft and gummy. So I really do recommend that extra step. But no matter what crust you use or how you prepare it, this is just an incredibly delicious slice of pie. And like I said in the intro, it really is shocking this isn't more popular. But possibly if enough of you make this and share it with your friends and family, the word will spread and the buttermilk pie will take its rightful place in the pantheon of great American pies. But regardless of whether that happens or not, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.